an important concept for a medical physicist, not only in your career, but also for ABR part three is understanding the hardware and software of equipment that you use. This includes scanning tanks, QA equipment, such as portal dosimeters, matrices, map checks, things of that nature. So you may get questions of what scanning tank do you have and what are some of the features what QA do you do on your tank before an annual QA? What would you look for when taking a beam profile? And what QA do you do for electrometers before your annual? So scanning tanks, you know, you can have Wellhofer, you can have IBA. It depends. Most of them are 50 by 50 by 50. It's important to know, obviously, again, what you specifically are using and you know your stats. Now, it's also important that not only do you know just kind of the hardware and how big it is and that, those you know, characteristics, but how you can use it. So obviously, your, your scanning tank, you're going to be using it for QA. So this means percent depth doses. This means beam profiles. And this means TG51. Also, maybe know why you do that. Why don't you want to use just solid water or something of that nature? So now what QA do you do on your tank? So this is important, and this is one that I see many clinics actually don't do before an annual QA, but it's important because if you think about it, whether you are commissioning, whether you're doing an annual QA, the tests that are being run in this tank is the foundation of your entire treatment planning system and your dose deposition in general for your just planning and your machine, everything. So it's exceedingly important to know that your scanning tank is working correctly. So first you want to look at scan speed. So what you can do here is put your ion chamber in your scanning tank and you know the distance between the walls of your scanning tank, use a stopwatch and manually calculate the scan speed of your chamber going across the tank and compare that to what the software says. Now, you also want to verify that you have scan accuracy. So for your software, you may tell your software, hey, take the chamber to 10 CM. Be sure that it actually does take it to 10 CM, that it's in the right position and that it is capturing readings as it is scanning. Next, uh, be sure that you can scan in all directions. So that is important as well as the diagonals, not just the X, Y, and Z, but also in the diagonal direction. So there are many other tests. I implore you to do your own research, find what your own tank requires and what is suggested. But this is a very important part that, especially in part three, if they don't ask you directly, be sure that you bring this up because it's very important and something that many people either don't do or forget about. So what would you look for when taking a beam profile? So the first thing is speed. So most speeds are around the, you know, the 0.5 CM per second speed. However, if you do a slower speed, you get a smoother reading, you get better penumbra accuracy. If you're doing small fields, you want a really low speed. So something you need to consider. You also want to be sure that the ion chamber is exactly in line. So I'm just gonna put ion chamber position for this. So if the ion chamber is kind of wobbly or it's not perfect, like the surface isn't set, or when it's in the chamber, you know, ideally, it is straight, but so this is the correct and say incorrect here is say it's pointed down or something. That's obviously very, hopefully it's not that bad, but kind of exaggerated to prove the point. If there's a wobble or if it's at a degree, that's going to completely change your beam profiles in all of your readings. So turn the lights off, scan the ion chamber to be sure that there's no wobble as it scans and also verify that the scanning tank knows and the software knows what ion chamber that you're using. 
Most of the softwares now will do different corrections for you based on your ion chamber, but you have to verify that, hey, tell it, I'm, I'm using a CC13 or I'm using this PTW ion chamber. You need to verify that that is in there correctly and that those characteristics are correct. Finally, what QA do you do on electrometers during an annual QA? First, it has to be calibrated. Very first thing that you should check. Second, you want to cross-examine this electrometer with a second electrometer. And then you could also check this with a multimeter. So those are the things you would want to test your electrometer before using it. And now those are features of Skating Tank you need to know. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll be happy to help where I can. Best of luck studying, and we'll see you in the next video.